Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. A smash and grab crime caught on tape. Police want you to look at this surveillance video to help them catch some burglars. It was decision day for two UK basketball recruits. Will they be playing for the Cats? Still some snow showers and flurries showing up across central and eastern Kentucky, but I'm focusing on a round of snow that may move in for the weekend. I'll show you why that may be a bigger deal coming up. Road crews say they'll be ready for any snow, but find out how last winter is still affecting them. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Good evening to you. Here is something you don't hear very often. It has been colder in Lexington today than in parts of Alaska. And that's not a good thing. This Arctic blast has a firm grip on the bluegrass. Tonight, we saw some flurries and snow showers. This is what it looked like in Lexington earlier. And now we're tracking more chances for snow into the weekend. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris? Hey, guys, you mentioned the fact that we are colder in Kentucky than into Alaska, and not just any part of Alaska. Barrow, Alaska. That is as far north as you could basically get, and it is only 29 degrees there. Here is the setup and why we are so cold. Jet stream is way, way displaced to the north. That's a blocking high pressure. So, again, 29 degrees showing up into Barrow, Alaska. What goes up? must come down. So temperatures go up there. Look at the eastern half of the United States. It is very cold. Actually, most of the country. 25 degrees right now in Lexington compared to that 29 degree thermometer showing up into parts of Alaska. 25 also into Richmond. Throw the winds into the mix. It feels like it's down into the mid and the upper teens. And those numbers will continue to drop as we make our way into the overnight. Snowflakes. We still have rounds of snow flurries and snow showers showing up on Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler radar. It is this area of southeastern Kentucky, we could be talking about a little sugar coating of snow or a minor accumulation as we go into the overnight. Parts of the bluegrass region, flurries in Lexington, but there's another little round of some light snows off to our west and northwest, and everything is coming at us from northwest to southeast. This stuff will turn off as we go into the start of the weekend, guys, but by the end of the weekend, Snow potential is on the increase, and I'll put out a map and show you who has the best chance of seeing accumulating snows by Sunday night and Monday in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Chris. You just heard it there. More snow in the forecast. You may be thinking with that situation about what kind of impact it'll have on our roads. So tonight, we checked in with state road crews to see if they're ready to handle whatever comes our way, and they tell us they are still feeling some effects from last winter. WKYT's Jordan Villines continues our live first alert weather team coverage. Jordan? Amber, that's right. As you can probably see here behind me, the roads are still clear for now, but that may not be the case this weekend, which is why road crews were out throughout the day today, treating, pre treating roadways and just trying to stay one step ahead of that snow. Road crews are already trained, winter weather plans already put in place, but there's still one setback that the Kentucky Department of Highways is dealing with the availability of salt. Typical stockpiles have been depleted drastically from the effects of last winter, and so it is making uh, the material very difficult to get right now. Usually by November 1st, the state's above ground salt storage facilities are filled 100%, but this year, they're only at 85%. Last year, uh, we were pretty much affected statewide, which is one reason we used as much material and, and had the, the, the higher cost than we typically do. Salt prices have increased more than 15% this year, with a ton now costing between $75 and $100. We'll do what we can to conserve material, uh, plow as much as we can, especially during daylight hours, and, and trying to conserve as much salt as we possibly can. Since July, the department has been working to restock the state's reserve supply, which was in during last year's winter, but officials say not to worry. All salt facilities will be fully stocked for this winter, hopefully sooner than later. We're close to being completely full with salt. It's just going to be uh, a little bit later than normal, and deliveries through the season will probably be a little more difficult this, this year. And today, Mayor Jim Gray announced that the city of Lexington currently has 6,000 tons of salt on hand. Live in Lexington, Jordan Villines, WKYT. Jordan, thank you. Road crews in Lexington plan to continue pre-treating roads throughout the day tomorrow. 
What a scene. They smashed open doors, cash registers, and display cases, grabbing whatever they could. Take a look at this surveillance video. Police say these people broke into five stores in the same Montgomery County Shopping Center. Tonight, they're still on the run. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to one of the store owners. He's tracking the investigation new at 11. You just kind of get mad to think that someone would do that to violate you that way. Watching the surveillance video at his jewelry store. It's irritating. It's depressing. Owner Jim McGinnis says it makes him sick all over again. They got guts. It makes you mad inside. Two men smashing through his door, shattering a display case, and taking off with some jewelry. And you, you, you wonder what's going through their head. To go through that much effort for this little that they actually got, uh, and why aren't they out working, you know? Making a living in, instead of being parasites off of other people. McGinnis Jewelers is one of five stores here at the Colony Shops strip mall in Montgomery County that was broken into. And now detectives are asking for your help in cracking the case. Sergeant Ralph Charles says he hopes someone recognizes the men. The driver has a block in his hand when he gets out. Or their car, a black Ford Edge. Uh, obviously. These guys here, they have no respect for other people's property or business. So if we don't get them apprehended, they could be another business, you know, tonight or tomorrow. Another reason McGinnis wants the brazen burglars caught. You know, it takes a little bit to settle down. The next night I couldn't sleep. I had to come out here at 4 in the morning and check my store. It, it messes with your mind. In Montgomery County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. You feel for the store owners. If you have any information that could help investigators, you're asked to call the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. We have that phone number posted on WKYT.com. They need your help getting answers. And tonight, the family of a missing Bath County woman tells us they are not giving up hope. 33 year old Norma Jo Brown hasn't been seen since September 23rd. Her family says she was with Kevin Howard, a man later arrested for the murder of a Kentucky professor. But when police arrested Howard, there was no sign of Brown. Her mother tells us the uncertainty is difficult, especially with the holidays coming up. And it's not going to be too much of a Thanksgiving for me if I don't hear from her or something, because last year she was here with us. The state police say they do not have many clues as to where Brown could be. E cigarettes have now been added to Lexington's indoor smoking ban. Our news partners at the Herald Leader report the Urban County Council unanimously approved the e cigarette ordinance tonight. It went into effect immediately. E cigarettes are no longer allowed in bars, restaurants, and most other workplaces in the city. Lexington is the eighth Kentucky community to add e cigarettes to a smoking ban. A new season. A new season begins tomorrow night for the UK basketball team, but tonight fans were focused on next year as two highly ranked recruits announced if they'll be playing for the Cats. And as Rob Romley tells us, fans were not mm. disappointed. Hi, Rob. Hello, and as you know, John Calipari takes a back seat to no one when it comes to recruiting. He picked up two big commitments early this evening that were televised on ESPNU. Scal Lebissier went first. He's 6'11 from Memphis, came to this country from Haiti following the earthquake. Cal was on him early. Since coming to America, he wanted to be a Wildcat. He is rated the number three overall prospect by rivals, number four by Scout. And shortly after, Lebissier Commitment committed point guard Isaiah Briscoe went on ESPNU and gave UK the nod. He's out of Newark, New Jersey. ESPN rates him top point guard in the country at 6'3 and a half, 200 pounds. He is more the prototype Calipari point guard. So, no doubt, Cal is smiling tonight, although Briscoe will not sign until the spring. He talks about that. We'll hear from both of them shortly in sports. All right, Rob, we will see you then. Thank you. Today, former state auditor Crit Lou Allen was sworn in as Kentucky's 56th lieutenant governor. Lou Allen took the oath of office this afternoon in a private ceremony at the home of a retired Kentucky Chief Justice. Governor Bashir appointed Crit Lou Allen to the position last week. She's taking over for Jerry Abramson, who resigned to take a job as deputy assistant to President Obama. Abramson says he's happy with the work he did in Frankfurt. So it's been a good three-year run. I think Kentucky's a little better off because I had an opportunity to, uh, to hold the position of lieutenant governor. And now I hope I can do something for our nation uh, uh, when I get up to the White House. Lou Allen will have a public swearing-in ceremony tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 in the state capitol rotunda. You'll be able to watch that live on WKYT.com. 
Reed Canvas has confirmed the results. The race for Georgetown mayor was indeed decided by just 21 votes. Incumbent Mayor Everett Varney says the Reed Canvas was held today and the results didn't change. He narrowly lost the race to former mayor Tom Prather. Varney has now conceded the race. On Facebook tonight, he thanked those who supported him. Tonight, the man who oversaw a West Virginia mine where an explosion killed more than two dozen miners has been indicted. Don Blankenship used to be the CEO of Massey Energy. A federal grand jury indicted him for conspiracy, securities fraud, and making false statements to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Investigators say Blankenship helped violate mine safety and health standards at the Upper Big Branch Mine. A 2010 explosion there killed 29 miners. Tonight, Lexington police think an argument over money led to a shooting today. It happened this afternoon on Pemberton Street in the East End neighborhood. Police say the victim was arguing with another man in a car. They say the man in the car got out and shot the other man in the chest. Some nearby sanitation workers and neighbors helped the victim until police arrived. Police say he was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. At last check, police had not made any arrests. Tonight, we are learning more about how an intruder made it inside the White House two months ago. A newly released Homeland Security report blames it on communication problems, muted alarms, unlocked doors, and poor training of Secret Service officers. Investigators say Omar Gonzalez jumped the White House fence, but he wasn't stopped until he was already inside the building. The report also claims an emergency response team didn't follow Gonzalez inside because they weren't familiar with the layout of the White House. Tonight, Lexington City leaders announced they have reached a 10 year franchise agreement with Time Warner Cable. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the new agreement has stronger customer service protections, including longer business hours for the cable company. The Urban County Council had considered resolutions that would have denied Time Warner's plan to transfer Lexington's cable operations to charter communications. An award winning actor and best selling author spoke to students at Moorhead State University tonight. Hill Harper gave a lecture as part of the president's performing arts and speakers program at Moorhead State. Harper talked about his work and what students can learn from the performing arts. The more I can reach students and expose them maybe to an idea or motivate them in some way, um, it's, 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 it's a good thing. I mean, and, and certainly. Uh, Coming from my profession, there's an opportunity to, to do that. So why not utilize the platform for, for, for positive things? Mm -hmm. Harper starred on CSI New York for nine years. He's also written four books that made the New York Times bestseller list.